In this video, we are on page 33 in your student journal. And we're going to be working through number one and number three in the extra practice. So in both of these problems, we're going to be graphing our quadratic function. And then we're going to be finding a lot of the characteristics about our function. We'll be finding the vertex, the axis of symmetry, we're going to find the maximum or the minimum value. We'll find the domain and range. And then we'll find where the function is increasing and decreasing. Okay. So in our first function, this is in vertex form. So um, our vertex, um, remember, is at the point H, K. And so if I'm looking at my h value, this is plus 1. Remember, it's opposite what you would think. So my vertex is at um, an x value of negative 1. And then I'm not adding anything onto the end. So k is 0. Right, and think of it like this. When we go to graph this function, um, if I just quickly sketch the parent function here, this is y equals x squared. Remember, this new function, if I look at um, it in terms of transformations, all I'm doing is I'm taking this parent function and I'm shifting it one unit to the left. And so what that does is that my new vertex, if I take my parent function, and all I'm doing is, is um, moving everything one unit to the left, my new vertex will be here. The point 1, 1, if I move that one to the left, it will now be at 0, 1. And then this point that was at negative 1, 1 will now be at negative 2, 1. Okay. And so that green parabola, that is my new function, and I was able to graph that by thinking of transformations on the parent function. And you can see that's why my vertex is at negative 1, 0. Now my axis of symmetry, remember the axis of symmetry is the line that goes through the vertex. So this purple line here, that is the axis of symmetry. That's at, on the line x equals, and remember it's the x value of our vertex, x equals negative 1. That is our axis of symmetry. So now that I have my um, parabola graphed, I can tell that my vertex is a minimum. And the, the minimum of my parabola, my y value, my smallest y value here is y is equal to 0. So my minimum is 0. That will be, remember, the y coordinate of my vertex. Okay, the domain of my parabola, all the possible x values, it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So my domain is all real numbers. My range, my possible y values, um, think, look up and down. Okay, remember my minimum is um, at y equals 0 here. So all my graph has y values that are greater than, greater than or equal to 0 right, because my graph is above this y value of 0. So y is greater than or equal to 0. All right, for increasing, decreasing, um, remember what we're going to think of is we're going to look at this axis of symmetry. This is at x equals negative 1. Remember, any x values to the left of this, these are all x values that are less than negative 1. Right? And any x values to the right of the axis of symmetry, these are all x values that are greater than negative 1. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look on what side of the axis of symmetry is my parabola increasing. Well, my parabola increases on the right side of the axis of symmetry. It increases on this side for x values greater than or equal to 1, or greater than negative 1. And my parabola decreases, remember read left to right, it decreases on the left side 
of my axis of symmetry. It decreases for x values that are less than negative 1. All right, so now we're going to move over to number 3. Um, and so what you'll notice is this is not in vertex form. So I can't just immediately pick out the vertex from this function. Um, this is in standard form. And so before I can graph this, um, I need to find the axis of symmetry. So when your function is in standard form, we um, have a formula for the axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry is equal to the opposite of b over 2a. Now remember, these values a, b, and c come from my quadratic function. The coefficient in front of x squared is a, the coefficient in front of x is b, and the constant is c. So I'm going to take my coefficients a and b here to find my axis of symmetry. The opposite of b. Well, b is negative 3, so the opposite of b is positive 3 over 2 times a. a is 3 halves. Okay. So you need to do 3 divided by 2 times 3 halves. When you do that, you should get 1. Okay, x is equal to 1. So my axis of symmetry is located at x equals 1. I'm going to kind of um, put that axis of symmetry here in my graph. So I know my vertex, remember this is the center, this is the axis of symmetry. My vertex is going to fall along, somewhere along this line. And so to find my vertex, I know the x value of my vertex because it's on this line is 1. And so the question is, I need to find where the y value of my vertex is. To do that, I'm going to take my x value of my vertex, which is 1, and plug that x value in for x. Okay. When I plug 1 in for x, it will get me my y value of the vertex. So I'm going to do that over here because I'm kind of running out of space. So my y value will be equal to... 3 halves times 1 squared minus 3 times 1 minus 1. When you type this in on your calculator, you get that the y value of the vertex is negative 2.5. So my vertex is located at 1, negative 2.5. I'm going to put that on my graph. 1, negative 2.5. Now, in order to graph my parabola, I'm going to need some more points to plot before I can draw the parabola. Um, so one thing to notice, and you can go back and look um, on page 32, 31 in your student journal, is when it's in standard form, one easy point to find on the graph is the y-intercept. Okay. In standard form, your y-intercept is c. It's the constant in standard form. This is your y-intercept. So if we go back to our function, c is at negative 1. My y-intercept is at negative 1. And so I can go ahead, I'm going to make a little note, the y-intercept is negative 1. I'm going to put a point at a y-intercept of negative 1. So on my y-axis, I know this point is on the parabola. And now remember, parabolas are symmetric. So if this is your axis of symmetry and you have this point on the parabola, I can copy this point on the other side of the axis of symmetry. So if this is at a y value of negative 1, on the other side, it will also be at a y value of negative 1. Once I have three points, that's, that's good enough to create my parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and graph my function. And now I'm going to find the rest of these things. 
So my vertex is a minimum. And then remember the minimum is that y value there. So the y value of my vertex is negative 2.5. The domain, again, it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. The domain is all real numbers. This time the range, my minimum is at negative 2.5. So all my y, possible y values are two point, negative 2.5 or greater. Right? It goes above negative 2.5. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2.5. Now I'm looking for my um, areas of increasing and decreasing. So remember, here's my axis of symmetry. So if I'm looking um, to the left of my axis of symmetry, these are all x values that are less than 1. If I'm looking to the right of my axis of symmetry, these are all x values that are greater than 1. So to find where it's increasing, my parabola is increasing to the right of the axis of symmetry. So it's increasing for x values that are greater than 1. My parabola is decreasing to the left of my axis of symmetry. So that is decreasing for x values that are less than 1.